Hi, I'm Billy Griffith. I am the Leadership Program Associate with the Gettysburg Foundation. And today we are coming to you from the top of Benners Hill, just to the east side of Gettysburg along the Hanover Road. I'm going to be telling you the story of Joseph White Latimer, 19 year old major in the Confederate artillery who commanded the 16 cannon up here on the afternoon, early evening of July 2nd, 1863. Latimer was born in August of 1843 he was from Brentsville, a town in Prince William County. Uh, there he grew up on a 500 acre farm. He was one of seven children. And Latimer is going to attend school in Brentsville. But for him, he has much higher aspirations. He believes that his ticket off the farm will be to become a cadet at the Virginia Military Institute and he will secure an appointment there beginning his term in the summer of 1859. From that point he rose through the ranks of his class and by the time the Civil War breaks out in April 1861 he is ranked number one. He will follow an artillery unit, the Courtney Artillery, uh, to Prince William and it is there where he will make the ultimate decision now that the war has really come to the his front doorsteps of his family's home that he will join up with the Confederacy. And he is going to be appointed a lieutenant in the Courtney Artillery, and he will see action in the Shenandoah Valley the next spring, as well as at Cedar Mountain, Second Manassas, and the Battle of Fredericksburg. It's at Fredericksburg where he will have one of his finest hours, as he continues to be elevated through the chain of command. And Latimer will be made a major, second in command of a Confederate Artillery Battalion under Lieutenant Colonel R. Snowden Andrews four batteries of artillery from Virginia and from Maryland. And it is that battalion of artillery that will find itself up here on Benners Hill on July 2nd, 1863. The far left end of the Confederate line, these guns will be rolled into position between 4 and 5 p.m. by Latimer. And they are going to be targeting the Union cannon less than a mile behind us on Cemetery Hill and Culp's Hill. This is the demonstration that General Ewell will be launching over here to take attention away from General Longstreet's main effort on the other side of the Union line. Well, these guns come under severe fire, outnumbered by Union cannon behind us. And they will be in position for about an hour and a half, taking heavy casualties, when finally Latimer will go to his superior, Major General Edward Johnson, and ask for permission to pull these guns off the hill. He will be given it. Four guns will be, re remain behind to cover the withdrawal of those pieces. They will be at the southern end of the hill here. Latimer will be with those guns when an artillery shell explodes nearby, mangles his arm, kills his horse, and pins him underneath the animal. Still, in immense pain, trapped underneath his horse, he is calling out orders for his men to retain their position. And he will be drug away to a field hospital behind the lines where he will have his arm amputated. His wound has now developed gangrene. And he will be taken to a house in Harrisonburg where he will be laid up. His brother, older brother, Edwin Walter Latimer, who was a Confederate surgeon working in Richmond, makes his way to Harrisonburg to be by his dying brother's side. And on August 1st, 1863, Latimer will succumb to his wounds and pass away. He will be buried down there in Harrisonburg's Woodbine Cemetery. Latimer, one of thousands of young lives cut short here as a result of the Battle of Gettysburg. And Latimer is also a great, great example that age and life experience is not a prerequisite to be a good leader.